My name is Fernando Gonzalez. I'm the Code Enforcement Supervisor, and I would like to call the July 23rd, 2018 Board of Adjustment meeting to order. Christy, will you please call roll? Member Johnson? Here. Member Shimon? Here. Member Corrigan? Here. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, there currently isn't a chair or vice chair. Therefore, Ms. Jones, will you call for nominations for temporary chair to preside over the first portion of the meeting, including election of officers, at which time the new chair or vice chair will be elected? Okay, do we have, uh, first of all, you can do nominations by just voice call vote, or if you'd like to do written ballot. And if, if possible, can I recommend? Voice call, fine. Can I recommend uh, Member Sherman? She's done this before, she's been the chair, but that's just a recommendation. I'll nominate Linda Sherman for temporary chairperson. I'll second it. Okay, um, so now we'll do the vote. Member Johnson? Aye. Member Shimon? Aye. Member Corrigan? Aye. For the information of the public, the Board of Adjustment is an impartial body made up of residents of the town of Prescott Valley who volunteer their times and, time and efforts and are guided by state and local rules and regulations. When you speak to the board, please state your name and address for the record. Only one person may speak at a time and all remarks should be addressed to the board as a whole. I would like to record now the town employees who are present. Members of the town staff are Fernando Gonzalez, Code Enforcement Supervisor, and Christy Jones, Administrative Support. We've already had the roll called. For the applicants in the audience, we do not have a full board present at tonight's meeting. Pursuant to Article 13.29.060, you have the right to request that your item be deferred to a future meeting when a full five-member board is present. A board approval or denial requires a majority vote. The motion will not pass if there are less than a majority affirmative votes. Please make this request known before we hear your application. I will ask if there are any changes or modifications to the minutes from the July 24th, 2017 meeting. Uh, hearing none, may I have a motion to approve the minutes as submitted? I'll make a motion to approve minutes as submitted. I will second that motion. May we have a, a voice roll call? Member Johnson? Aye. Member Corrigan? I abstain because obviously I wasn't at the meeting. And temporary chairperson Shimon? Aye. Uh, excuse me. May, may we ask the applicant if she'd like to move forward? She is in the audience. Okay. We haven't, they haven't read that part in yet. They just did the minutes. I'm asking now if staff or board members have any announcements. Actually, I do have an announcement. I'd like to uh, invite or congratulate Edward Corrigan. Edmund. Edmund, sorry. That's okay. Um, <laughs> he is our new member. Just like to introduce him to the folks. He comes in well versed. I had a, number, a chat with him earlier and I've been very impressed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further announcements? We'll proceed then to the first item on the agenda, which is the election of officers. Uh, we are now going to accept motions, or nominations rather, for officers. I'll make I make a motion to nominate Member Shimon for chairman. Second. A voice roll call, please. Member Johnson? Aye. Temporary Chairperson Shimon? Aye. Member Corrigan? Aye. I would nominate Daryl Johnson for Vice Chair. Second. Member Corrigan? Yeah, aye. Chairperson Shimon? Aye. Member Johnson? Aye. The second item on the agenda is UP18001, 
upon the application of Matthew Puitt Owner Jungle Cat Heating and Cooling, a request for renewal of use permit UP16002 per section 13-14-020C6 of the Town of Prescott Valley Zoning Ordinance in order to continue to operate a mechanical shop in a C2 zoning district. The subject property is located at 8812 East Valley Road, Prescott Valley, Unit 7, Lot 2265, APN number 103-26-513. Mr. Gonzalez, your report, please. Um, as you mentioned, the subject property is located in a Z2 zoning district, which does not allow the actual use. Um, mechanic shop a lot is allowed in a C3 by matter of right. However, with the benefit of a use permit, it is allowed to function in the C2 zoning district. The applicant actually came before the Board of Adjustments in 2016 and requested a use permit, and it was granted to them under specific conditions. One of the conditions is that they renew after two years. It is actually important to note that the two year print time frame has come and gone. We haven't had any issues or, or concerns in regards to the properties. They've been good neighbors um, to the surrounding area. I think they're an asset to the community. Um, as you mentioned, the facts state that a mechanic, um, me mechanical shop, which is HVNC, shop is allowed in a C2 zoning district with a use permit. Um, staff is actually recommending approval of UP 18-001 under the following conditions. That the building, any building permits needed or required for the property um, be achieved or obtained prior to construction. That any and all uses be inside the building. That if there's any uh, outside storage, open storage, it is screened 100%. And lastly, that the use shall exist or be valid until such time as the property is sold or that the business changes hands. And that's all I have. I thank you. I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Fernando, I have a question. Um, was it on a two-year renewal and now we're going to a permanent? Yes, the two-year renewal is normally a temporary or is it conditional so that we can make sure that the business is compatible to the area, that there isn't going to be any complaints or calls or issues. Um, if there is within that two-year period, I would have brought that before you and recommended not to continue the use in that area since it is a conditional use. Um, since we have no issues with it, they've been good neighbors, we don't foresee any problems in the future. We're allowing them to continue, and it, normally we do that just, uh, again, it's for those specific people, so if it changes hands, they have, the new folks have to come in and get the permit. Any other questions for Mr. Gonzalez? Uh, no. <clears throat> is the applicant here? Uh, his, his wife is here. She's sitting right in the audience. He wasn't able to make it. He's out of town, but she'd be willing to answer whatever questions you may have. I, w I wanted to know if she wanted to address the board. Oh. Are there any other, uh, any, anyone from the public who would like to comment on this application? Hearing no public comment, we will bring the item back to the board for a closing discussion. Has, as a board member, a comment or the need to discuss this? No, I'd, I would motion to have the approval to, uh, use permit number UP 18-001 with the conditions that uh, Mr. Gonzalez stated. Second. May we have the roll called? Member Corrigan? Aye. Vice Chairperson Johnson? Aye. Chairperson Shimon. Aye. The second item on the agenda, use permit V18-001. <clears throat> Upon the application of the Town of Prescott Valley, agent for Guy Campo and Min... Thu Min Nang. Nungo. I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce the name. 
we can just spell it out. Okay, NGO owners, a request for a variance to exceed the maximum encroachment allowed into the front yard setback as described per section 1321-120B2B of the Town of Prescott Valley Zoning Ordinance. The subject property is located at 3716 North Taylor Drive, Prescott Valley Unit 12, lot number 3419, APN 103290040. Your report, Mr. Gonzalez? The subject property is actually in a R1L-10 zoning district, which is a single family residential. The 10 actually indicates the, the district, the zoning district that it's in. It actually outlines the setbacks <coughs> for the primary structure. With, for this, it happens to be 25 in the front, 25 in the rear, seven on the sides to the drip line. Town code does allow for an encroachment into the front yard six back for six front front yard setback no more than six feet the property owners actually came into the town of prescott valley and wanted to erect a carport in order to put their vehicles on there and we're told that there was a 19 foot setback for the carport because it is an open porch or carport which is allowed by town code um, them not knowing anything about construction of course came in in good faith and asked questions wanted to be informed before they continued on their, pro on their project. As you can see in your, uh, one of your exhibits, this is what they, was, they were given, showing the 19 foot, I believe it might be there. No? We have a copy in there. I apologize. It's actually gonna be in your packet. It doesn't show up on there. I apologize. Last it page of the packet. It should actually show up on the screen there so that you This what you're referring to? No, it's it's actually going the to picture be of the, the completed picture of project. This one here. Trail of the completed project. Yes. See. Is it the last page? Yes, it is the last page. Oh, let me see. Uh, not my last page. Oh, there it is. All right, now. Uh, Thank you, Christy. As you can see, that was, the, that was the information that was provided to them. That's a GIS rendering of their property. And as you can see, the 19 foot is the setback that's required because it's a six foot encroachment. The front yard setback is 25 feet, take away the six, 19 foot minimum. Um, this is the, and that's actually her writing in, indicating that it can go no longer than six months, possibly a year for the permit, and it usually takes three weeks to issue that permit. Um, when actually that came to, and she was given that information, she went home, filled out the, the actual permit application, turned it in, everything looked fine, and was issued a permit. Once there, she was issued a permit for the carport, they went out, the town of Prescott Valley went out to inspect the carport. Uh, the inspector, when he was out there, couldn't find the property pins on the property. So of course, when he couldn't find them, he was walking around, and you can see there is no carport there. That the applicants or the property owners came out and gave the building inspector this sheet that was given to him by the town staff here. And if you look at that, and then you look at the actual site plan that they had turned in, you can see where the 19 feet is actually circled right underneath where it says front, right where the E is, down 78. You see the circled 19 foot? If you would note that where that line is, the two lines from the end of the carport to the actually looks like a drainage ditch. If I may, I can show you. that was approved and I'm going to refer back to what was given to them if you can see where the the drainage ditch is and the carport and if you can see that in that rendering where it shows it is 
It actually looks like it's right up behind the drainage ditch. Do you see that? So when the building inspector couldn't find the property pins to verify the site plan, he actually referred to this and saw that the measurement looked like it was taken from the back of that drainage ditch. So that's what the inspector did, unfortunately. And that was not the property line. So he approved the footings at that stage. So when he gave them the green tag, the property owners assumed that it was correct, had the contractor come back, go ahead and pour the concrete and start construction of the carport. So the carport was built and then soon after that, and I want to say it was in, I'm going to refer to my notes, that was uh, in, in April, the April the 13th is when they did the footings and he came back on April the 26th when the carport was already up, constructed and in place to do a final framing inspection. At that time, he also approved that, thinking he was in compliance with the setbacks, so the actual carport was built and almost done. Um, soon after that, somebody drove by and brought it to my attention. We went out there and looked at it and started doing our measure, my measurements and found that he was encroaching actually the 10 feet instead of the 19, or instead of the 6 feet, he was encroaching the 10 feet, which was incorrect, but by that time, it was pretty much done. So what we did is we came back, looked at that, spoke with the property owners, um, talked to them a little bit about the situation. They had spent uh, quite a bit of money putting this up. Of course, they relied on town approvals for the carport. So we didn't feel that it would probably be to the benefit to both parties to have them tear it down. So what we did is we came up with this compliance agreement that would allow them to keep the carport for as long as they could enjoy it, because of course they paid for it, um, or until they vacated the property or they sold the property at that time it had to come down. So these are some of the conditions that were in that a compliance agreement, and, and that was all done prior to uh, almost finaling the building. The building has been final since then, um, and went through the process, and then we decided, well, we need to we need to codify this and bring it before the board, and have you guys verify or bring validity to that agreement. That agreement's not written in stone; it's not registered anything. The, the applicants were advised. I just wanted to make sure that they were on the same page and were willing to go through the agreement if it was approved here today before the board. Um, the town code actually does stipulate under section 1329.0402, and it states that the Board of Adjustments may not grant a variance if special circumstances apply to the prop, only if special circumstances apply to the property. That's the only way that you can grant a variance, and it's not a self-imposed hardship. I believe there is special circumstances in regards to this, and it's not a self-imposed hardship. And for those reasons, staff is actually recommending that you approve V18-001 under the following conditions. That the carport remain or allowed to remain until the property owners vacate or sell the property as described in the compliance agreement that was signed May the 2nd, 2018, and that there is no changes or alterations to the carport. That's, and that's all I have. I can answer any questions that you may have at this time. I have a couple of questions, Fernando. Did you actually get a survey done to determine? No, we didn't do a survey, but however, we, I located uh, two property pins. Okay, all right. And those were in the front and, and determined. The property, like I said before, the minimum setback for that property in the 10 district is 25. I measured uh, 31 feet. So they actually set the house back a little bit, which helped considerably. And you can see, and I'm gonna show you the end result. Well, there's the inspection report from the inspector. And this is the actual carport that's there. I know there was some concerns in, in regards to line of sight, but you can see how, how much further back it is. 
So there's about, I want to say, at least 30 feet to the edge of the road. And then, of course, then the road is on the other side. So there really, really isn't that much of an impact if it stays the way it is. However, in order to clean it up, that's why we went into the compliance agreement so that it's not an issue when they go to sell the property or down the line, we don't have a problem with new buyers or new, new occupants of the property. It looks like they've kept the property up. It looks, it looks yes. good. Yeah, yeah they're, they're in the, they're, at that photograph, they were in the middle of uh, doing new landscaping. So you can see the underlay and some of the rocks out there. I have no questions. Madam Chairperson, I have a I couple. recognize thank Member Corrigan. Yes, thank you, ma'am. First of all, can we just get it on the record that this is the appeal from the town and not from the homeowners? That so is, that there's no misunderstanding? That is correct. This is appeal from the town of Prescott Valley. We are bringing this before. We are the agents for them, for the applicants, for the property owners. Second question. Is this house new construction or is it, or was it there and they just added the carport? It was there. It was a pre-existing structure okay. and they and added, they added the, carport. the carport. They added the carport, yes. Okay. I think that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. you. Since the town is the applicant and we have asked you questions, we will bring the matter back to the board for discussion. Do we, do we have Thank you. discussion? Is the homeowner on deal? I'm, I'm sorry. Is the homeowner here? No, the homeowner is not here. Um, the husband actually has medical issues, and the wife is usually the one I've been in contact with, but they weren't able to make it today. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to All right. jump in there. Then, hearing no discussion, I I would ask for a motion. It's my belief. I think for audience. Uh, uh, comment from the public. Come forward, please. Board of Adjustment Chair Shimon and board members, I'm Sandy Griffiths, Executive Director of Yavapai County Contractors Association, and I also sit on the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission for District 5 for Yavapai County. I'm here uh, to express some concerns over this agenda item. I do agree with Fernando in as much as this was not, nor should be considered a self-imposed hardship by the homeowner. This was a mistake and an error that was made by the town of Prescott Valley. The homeowner was an innocent bystander and party to this. I also agree that it should come forward to you for the proper variance, which is the correct thing to do. However, the caveat attached to this variance with the requirement that the homeowner remove, dismantle, and tear down this very lovely carport at such a point in time that he goes to sell his home is not the right thing to do. This carport should run with the lay of the land. It's now a permanent structure. It's a, not a temporary structure. The hardship that it has created for the homeowner, I've never met the homeowners. I've never seen them, I've never met them. They are now faced with the hardship financially at such a point in time to remove this structure due to a mistake and an error by the town of Prescott Valley. Plus, we also have to deal with the components of Yavapai County and the tax assessments coming into play because they're gonna catch this so now what happens? So I'm here to appeal just because I think it's my right thing to do as a citizen and working with cases like this every day of the week 
that we grant the variance but allow the homeowner to keep the hardship of the carport. This will not set precedent by any means because as you know, precedent cannot be set. Every case is on a case by case basis and that's why you're good at what you do. So thank you for letting me take a few minutes and share my heartfelt feelings about this agenda item. Chair Pearson, a comment? Um, I just had a comment and it is a good point. Um, I thought about that when I read the read it and I thought, well, that's kind of rough for them to have to tear that down. That um, if it's, even if the home is sold, the people that when they're buying the home are gonna see this carport and then all of a sudden they say, well, the carport doesn't go with the home. So it's kind of kind of difficult. And it looks like their uh, cost was like almost $18,000 ahead as far as the permit price. So it's a substantial amount of money that has been put into it. Is that, is that a question for me? Whether they should yeah. keep it, yes, or, it or, or what was the reason for? It is for you, yeah, pretty okay. much. Just comment and question for you. Well, one of the conversations I had with the property owner in regards to this pro this project was, at the time that we discovered it, we could have gone a different route, and and actually caused them to remove it, regardless, and we would have gone to litigate this, and caused them to remove or gone one way or the other and not gone before the Board of Adjustments and asked for the variance. Um, this is something that, of course, the building official was strongly urging us to do, is to go back and just litigate it and have them remove the, the structure, regardless on who did what. Um, I didn't think that was the right thing to do. That's why I went this route, and in talking to the property owners, they agreed that, yes, they, they have no issue with tearing it down at the time that they either vacate or sell the property, and they understood. So that's, that's the reason why we went this route, is because I didn't want to penalize them for something that we did and all the money that they spent. So if, anyway, that's, that's, that's why we did it this way. You were recognized. Uh, thank you. Um, with all due with all the, the respect, Mr. Gonzalez, and we discussed this when we had our little pre-meeting, mm -hmm. I completely agree with Mr. Johnson. Uh, for one thing, I, I don't see any harm to the carport the way it is. Uh, I had raised the question that you mentioned about site problem sure. with people driving on the road, and I can't see that happening. Uh, I really don't think that we should have a condition to the effect of forcing these people to tear down the carport at the end of uh, their ownership of the property. Um, so I, I will probably, if somebody makes a motion, uh, I would vote in favor of this application um, with the second, the second recommendation, no changes or alterations to be made to the carport, but without the first recommendation. The difficulty for me, and I ask for your guidance, sure. is th that an agreement has been entered into between the town and the homeowner. That is correct. And al although I understand the hardship cannot be of your own making, and I agree indeed that this was not, correct. have we the authority as a board to, to modify or work outside this agreement that's been entered into between the town and the homeowner. If, if we change the agreement, we're gonna to have to go back to the property owners because it is an agreement that they signed and we're well aware of. We're gonna to have to go back, regard, if let's say we, we change it and say, no, we're not gonna honor the agreement with the property owners, then we're gonna to have to go back and re-litigate re this issue and it may have to go back to the town attorneys for further process. If indeed the difficulty, and it was, at the behest of the, the town, then why would the homeowner be reluctant to litigate? Because there is certainly merit to saying, gee, I'd like to sell you my house, but after you sign the papers, you have to tear the carport down. Right. Th that's gonna make it a difficult, right. I wouldn't want the listing. Sure. Um, well, of course, that's why I say it's prior to them selling or vacating the property. However, like I said, there, there may be some, red, some 
issues coming up if we don't follow the agreement. And I don't know what they may be, but there, there's gonna be other discussions in regards to this. And this is what I thought was the worst of the two evils to do it this way. That way they can enjoy the carport for as long as they want it because of course they pay for it. They did explain to me that they had no, um, no future plans of moving, selling, or anything like that. So that's why they were comfortable with signing the agreement. But the board has the right to, to make changes or modifications. Can we discuss this a little further, Mr. Gonzalez? Sure. Isn't it a fact that this is an application before this board for a variance to permit this carport to remain? Correct. And isn't with it also a fact that your agreement with the homeowners, while it was the basis for you filing this appeal, yes. is not binding on us? The, the actual contract? The contract isn't binding on us, and the proviso with respect to the taking down of the carport at the end of their ownership isn't binding on us as well. It is as part of the conditions because that's what I recommend. That's why it's on the, the sheet of, the, of when they signed it. That's why I made that recommendation number one, that it's approval condition on that um, signed compliance agreement. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a new member and sure. I, I apologize in advance oh, no, no, for no. being a big pain in the neck, which <laughs> I've been known to be for many years. Sure. Uh, my record follows me from New Jersey. Uh, but isn't it a fact that we don't have to take staff recommendations? That is correct. These are just recommendations, correct. Okay. And isn't it also a fact that your agreement with them is something other than this application. I mean, you put it before us because you said that if we agree to this and we agree to it with the recommendations that they're bound by agreement to do it. Correct. But if we don't, if we don't pass it with the recommendation and we remove that recommendation, does it really matter? I mean, I mean it matters maybe from your point of view, right. but I mean, does the agreement mean anything other than the fact that they agreed that if we put this in as a condition, they would follow the condition? That's that is, all this is, right? This, that is correct. If, if you choose, again, this is just a recommendation from staff. Mm -hmm. If you choose to change that condition or not even, in, not even include it, that's your prerogative. Uh, these are just recommendations. My agreement with them is actually separate. However, I put that in there as part of the conditions for your consideration. Do so. you feel that strongly about this recommendation that you would ask us to go against our better judgment and follow it? The issue with you not approving it with those conditions, I believe is gonna be a hardship for the property owners. It is my understanding that the agreement that I made is actually the only agreement that they had a gulp factor that they can actually swallow. So if we don't move forward with this agreement, with the language that was put in there, we will probably have to speak to our attorneys, maybe come back and, and go a different route with the property owners and, and require them to remove it regardless of the variance. See, I don't, I don't see it that way. Now, I, I'm, I know I'm a new member right. and maybe I'm a jerk. And maybe <laughs> I'd be proven to be wrong. Right. And maybe mayor will call me up on the phone saying, what the hell's the matter with you? No, no. Uh, believe me, I've had that happen before. Oh, okay. So, but let's, let's get back to this. Sure. Let's, let's just say for the sake of argument, we approve this. Right. They got their variance. Correct. They got their, it's there. Right. Uh, your agreement, I don't, think, I don't think your agreement means anything if you want to know what I think. Oh, no, I, I agree that and, and, and again, this is this is just a staff. And then maybe I'll have the attorney call me up and yell at me. But no. <laughs> it's this is just a staff recommendation. It was just to get them to agree to it so that it come come before the board, and we wouldn't be concerned that they wouldn't tear it down. But if we're not going to make them tear it down, what, right? What does the agreement matter? Well, no, unless no. now it's your application. Now, assuming you wanted to really take this to the next step. You would withdraw your application and you would make them make an application. But you don't want to do that. No, I don't. I'm the one that was actually 
bringing this forward so that we can go, go ahead and allow them to keep the, the carport where it is. You're being a good guy, Mr. Gonzalez, and I agree with that. But I can't, I can't vote for a requirement for them to tear it down. Maybe you've got your two votes and maybe you don't. But, and I'm sorry. sorry. I, no. This, is, this is why we're here. Mr. Right. Gonzalez, would, since you're the applicant and, and mm -hmm. the, why would the homeowner not reciprocate with litigation if the town were to say, tear that down, because they built it with the approval of the town, the mistake was indeed not theirs. Correct. And if I had a license, and I'd love to take that case, but I don't. <laughs> um, I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I don't know that they would. Um, I don't know that they won't. Um, all I know is that this is what I thought was the better of the two evils is to come before the board and ask for this. I, I don't know that they would or would, to be then honest. If, if we are within our province to amend the staff recommendation and make a motion that we feel is equitable. Sure. We will, we, the town will move forward in other avenues to cause the carport to be removed. Why? Um, because that, that was the recommendation from the legal department. The who? The legal department. Could you repeat that Mr. again? Mr. Legler expressed that, that opinion? That was, that Could was you the, repeat the, that? That was, <laughs> that that was the recommendation if we couldn't get this approved that we would look for other avenues to cause the carport to be removed without the contract. Get what approved? The agreement that you made? The agreement that we made. But if we give the variance without the requirement that the carport be removed at a later time, what are you going to do? You, you, you know, I really don't know what they're going to do. They're going to have their variance. What, I, I can tell you what you could do. You could appeal to the Superior Court, I suppose. And again, I, I couldn't You don't want to do that. I, I, and I couldn't you tell you what could happen. That. Like you said, this is a staff recommendation. You can, you can move forward and approve it without the staff recommendation. You can make your own recommendation. You can, you know, it, it's not something that you have to do. I have to say in all candor, when I read this, my opinion was very similar to Mr. Johnson's. Sure. What concerned me is that I did not want the board to move in violation of an agreement that was signed between the town and the homeowner. Right. But if it is indeed fact-based, that that agreement does not prohibit us from granting the variance but changing the stipulations, I just, I don't want to do anything as a board that will violate this, this agreement. Sure. And again, it's just a recommendation. It's not, that's why it's put, I put it on there for you to recommend approval for that uh, compliance agreement. But you have every option to change it, not approve it, move it, just like any other condition. Have we either further comment from, do we have any further comment from the public? Chair Shimon, board members, uh, this conversation has been very interesting and enlightening and I like the direction you're going. This is just a recommendation and anything can be changed. And for me, sitting in the audience, to hear staff say, well, it's going to turn into a legal issue. No, that's a fear factor, and we have to take care of our community and our citizens the best we can. This was a mistake made by the town and the homeowners, I'm sure, would be forever grateful if the Board of Adjustments accepted this variance with the modification that they can live happily ever after and sell their home with their attached permanent structure of a carport. Again, it's not temporary. And I do believe you are in your right to change and make anything you want to do to this recommendation by the town. 
and again, I'm so happy I'm here to express my concern. And I appreciate your hard work and dedication and what you do for the citizens. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gonzalez, will you return, please? Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, an ounce of prevention. Please reiterate again that this board, and we will begin discussing it soon, sure. may amend, <clears throat> the, the, we may proceed with this variance and amend the, the conditions without being in, in violation. That is correct, yes. You can move forward, and again, these are just recommendations. You can change, alter, make your own recommendations. Thank you. You're welcome. Members of the board, Mr. Johnson. I make a motion that we <coughs> um, approve this variance 18-001, but with only staff recommendation two and, and um, scratch the recommendation one that the carport will be there until the property is sold. Second. May I have a, a voice vote, please? Vice Chairperson Johnson? Aye. Member Corrigan? Aye. Chairperson Shimon? Aye. Okay, so that we know that they do not have to tear down that car part. So. I'm now opening the meeting to further public comment. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the board at this time? Hearing none, we close the floor to the public. And as the board chairperson, there being no further business, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. May I have a voice call vote, please? Move to adjourn. Second. Member Corrigan? Aye. Vice Chairperson Johnson? Aye. Chairperson Shimon? Aye. We're adjourned. <laughs>